Thanks a lot. Great. Okay, guys. So we're on to on to our next uh, session. I hope everyone is uh, is uh, fired up as I am after after that one. Uh, so we're sticking this is, uh, to the investment trends. This is our third uh, session in the investment stream uh, after uh, before we kind of uh, move move on from that. But uh, we've got a we've got a dear friend of mine uh, called Richard Sharpier on the line with uh, with us today. About four years ago, Richard ventured on his own and founded a, a business called Heritage Wealth Partners. Um, and he'll tell you a little bit more about that. But one of the special things, uh, you know, about about Richard and the work he's doing is they've got this one fund that specifically targets unicorn uh, companies around the world, and it's had some phenomenal returns. Richard, I'm not gonna not gonna take the wind out of your sails, but I, but I do need you to uh, to mention some of the numbers you guys have been achieving in in terms of that. And without further ado, then I'll just uh, I'll hand over to you to share with us uh, how you guys go about it. Thanks, Lo. I really appreciate it. And obviously, to me, it's a privilege to to participate in this forum as well um, and to come alongside guys like Lo, who uh, I've had a longstanding relationship with uh, since there were three three founders sitting around a small coffee table. Um, but uh, yeah, we can get more into that another time. Um, just. The, I think the first thing is, is probably, as you'll notice, the, um, the stark difference between the marketing photo that, that Lo uh, showed you a few seconds ago and, and this one. Um, so <laughs> that, uh, that mugshot of mine was taken just over four years ago, actually, uh, and just before I founded Heritage Wealth Partners. That's a wild um, ride. <laughs> <laughs> so I think clearly the the strain of uh, of being a business owner is uh, is, is is there and, and evident, um, and I think it's it's part of the part of the battle scars, um, and uh, yeah. So obviously, as being a business owner, I know what it's like to to be fighting in the trenches. I know what it feels like to be building the plane as you fly it, and, and I think that really does help us uh, with insight into the types of companies that we're investing with, the types of companies that we're partnering with. Um, again, I, I'm sure that I'm talking to the right audience when I talk about battle scars. And I, and I just want to touch on this a little bit before, before I talk about the, the, the fund itself and, and the, the process. But, uh, you know, for me, my battle scars, there's one of them, you know, a little bit of uh, premature hair loss. I think for other, for other people, for other founders, their, their battle scars could be that, that they've put their life on pause um, while they have started their business um, and they're pouring every, every second, every minute, uh, trying to extract the most out of every second and every minute um, to get their businesses going. Um, and, I, and I know that there are others out there that their battle scars could be a failed relationship um, because the person that, that, that was there in the relationship with them, um, you know, wanted, their, wanted them to be there. And, and unfortunately, sometimes we just can't be there. Um, you know, we're, we're locked up in our office do, doing, the, doing the things that keep the lights on. Uh, and that's why I think this forum is so important, um, because I, I really think that, that those of us who are, who are part of this are, are there to support each other and to, to really keep us account and make sure that we are, that we're flying close to that sort of imperceivable line of work and life balance. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'm very grateful to you, Lo, for, for actually for, for this forum. Um, Okay, so enough about my, my, my loss of hair. Maybe just to talk a little bit more about um, why, why we have the, the, the Unicorn Fund. Um, so just going back, the Unicorn Fund was launched at the end of 2018. Um, over the next 18 months, it proceeded to return about 136% in rands. Obviously, a little bit of that was a rand dollar exchange. Um, it's currently sitting at a, at, a, at a return in dollars of 58% um, over the last 12 months. So those are the types of returns that, that, it, that, it, has, uh, that it has enjoyed. Um, but obviously, in terms of the, of the inspiration of it, uh, I've only got 10 minutes. I could probably talk, talk about this for hours and days, as Lo would tell you. So I think if you want to know more, let's go out, uh, maybe get a late lunch one day. Uh, and go sit and talk about it uh, for, again for hours. I don't want to bore you with technical analysis because again, I only have 10 minutes. I don't want to talk about fundamentals. What I want to do is I just want to talk to you about what, uh, I want to bring you behind the curtain and, and really just try and convey to you the inspiration of the fund um, and the ongoing spirit as, we, as we're managing the fund. So the inspiration uh, was actually born from one of my longest standing clients. They founded their business in 2011 
And uh, a few years ago, they sold 50% of it for a, a fairly large sum uh, of money. Uh, and they sold it to a, they sold 50% of their business to a large blue chip uh, corporation. Uh, just after that sale, I sat around the boardroom table with the two founders uh, and our investment team. And we were actually just spitballing investment ideas because, you know, they had some investable capital and they wanted to know what we could do for them. And uh, obviously that, that meeting went ahead. And, and at the end of the meeting, when, when the clients actually left, uh, I sat there with the portfolio managers and I said to them that this, this is the type of business I want to be investing in. This is the type of business where I can see this exponential growth. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, in the, in the retail investment environment in South Africa, it's very difficult to, to, to find uh, companies that are that size. Um, I, I'm going to refer to it later, but, um, but Tanya spoke about it earlier, the, the gazelles. And um, what, we, what I said to them is I said, guys, I want to find a way that we can invest in businesses with this type of growth with this exponential growth um, but obviously in a way that um, that is viable for the investment community as well um, so by the way I'm not going to be using PowerPoint uh, you're going to have to stare at my pretty bald head for a little bit longer um, so so one the takeaways that we got from that meeting in terms of you know what I was looking for was that the, they were uh, the owners of the business were still uh, actively involved in the management of the business. So they still had their hands on the wheel. They hadn't taken their hands off yet. Um, it was still owner, uh, it, they still owned a large stake in the business. So, so for them, it was vital that the business continue to grow and continue to succeed. Uh, and also they had now got a large institutional investor. And again, Tanya did mention it. You know, in South Africa, it's very difficult for, for uh, VC companies to, to actually get an institutional backer. Uh, and, and this company had successfully managed to do that. So for me, that was definitely one of, the, one of the keys because obviously that institutional backer brings with it a, a, a certain level of financial security, um, of auditing, um, and making sure that the books of a company are correct, uh, and also just you know, being able to back the business. Um, if they needed, if they needed cash, and if they needed a cash injection, or, or you know, just to help them grow. So what we were looking for is we were looking for game changers, uh, and now I personally love that love that word because it really does bring about the the spirit of of what we of the type of company we were looking to invest in. Um, so we were looking for entrepreneurs, um, people who had the vision to disrupt an entire industry. Um, but not only the vision to disrupt an industry, because although there are many people who can do that, relatively speaking, um, they still need to have a certain business sense uh, and, and a business capability in order to still drive proper profits. So the first challenge when you sort of take those metrics is where do you find these mythical creatures? Um, and again, Tanya did, did touch on it. You know, um, the amount of unicorns in South Africa is very limited. Um, and, and, you know, we needed to make sure that, that we had a broad base of, of companies that we could invest in. So we put a lot of research, obviously research is pivotal to any investment portfolio. Um, we poured resources and man hours into a very focused research uh, framework. And um, after doing this actually for a number of years, uh, Craig and Tony from Anbra Capital, who we work very closely with, uh, one of our portfolio managers, uh, he drafted the initial document of the Unicorn Fund. Now, I think probably the most prolific name that, that, that we have in that portfolio is, is Amazon. Uh, and I think when people hear Amazon, it sort of it evokes um, probably a little bit of FOMO because, you know, we didn't get in early enough. Um, also, maybe a little bit of fear because, you know, then you start to associate with all of the FANG stocks and, and people say that these, these companies have got these extreme valuations and uh, PE values. So Amazon, I'm using it as a specific example because, yes, our unicorn fund is too young to have been an early adopter of unicorn. But, you know, with the metrics that we've given, if we go back, we see that that. Amazon actually would have slotted perfectly into, into the fund. Um, and most likely, can't say for certain, obviously, but most likely we would have bought it. 
As a matter of fact, we still bought it. Even, even after, you know, the fact that the, the, the fund was only launched December 2018, um, Amazon's valuation was obviously already very high. It still met our metrics um, and it still does today. So we still hold it. Uh, in fact, it is the only holding that we have in the, in the sort of general FANG group. And um, we're not holding any of the other companies in there that don't meet our metrics, but Amazon still do and obviously are still growing. So, so what are we trying to achieve? We're trying to achieve that type of growth, that type of business where they have this large runway um, and they can really have an exponential growth into, um, yeah, into obviously the, the potential that they, that they have. Uh, so I don't know how many of you, and unfortunately I can't say, you know, raise your hands because I can't see any of you. I don't even know how many people are, are still watching. Um, but I don't know how many of you have heard of a spiffy pop. Uh, probably not very many of you. It's not a interesting Japanese uh, sucker. Uh, it is actually uh, a recent uh, term that was coined. Uh, and basically what it is, is when your, your daily share price increases by more than what your original purchase price was. Okay. So as an example, I'm trying to give you some of those. So two of the shares that we've, that we've purchased that are in the portfolio where we've had these spiffy pops. Um, one of them is Shopify. Probably a lot of you are familiar with Shopify. Uh, we purchased Shopify at $138 a share. Uh, it recently hit its high of $1,146 a share. Um, current price is $931 a share. So we made over 700% profit on that one share. Okay, um, Zoom. I really like the story of Zoom. We're all using Zoom now. And actually, that was one of the fundamentals that we looked at in the portfolio was to say, what are technologies that we actually want to use? Because if we want to use it, the chances are other people want to use it and the likelihood of it, likelihood of it being successful is quite high. Um, Lo, I'm not timing myself, by the way. So you must just get the thing and tell we're, me. When we're on our last minute, Richard. Okay, so, so Zoom, again, the type of technology that we, that we used. So we, we liked it, so we bought it. We were relatively early adopters of Zoom. We bought Zoom at $62 a share. It hit a high of $588 a share, currently sitting at $415 a share. Again, about a 700% profit on that, uh, on that share. We're still holding it. Um, there are 81 shares in 11 different sectors, um, but they're all... They're all our type of people they are the type they are entrepreneurs business owners disruptors um and and obviously that that for us is, is pivotal so what i would love to do and, and i'm actually going to approach tanya about it is to we i would love to have a vision of a south african version um where we can buy some gazelles and help hopefully turn them into uh, into unicorns but uh, if you want to know more you can get hold of us or you can get hold of low and i'm sure he'll put you in the right direction Thanks, Lo. I appreciate your time. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thanks for being here with us today. Uh, always great to just to kind of hear your, your insights in terms of, you know, where to look for good returns. I think 2020 has been a year where returns have generally been kind of mixed to pretty bad uh, all around. So congratulations on the huge success you guys have had with, with backing uh, big entrepreneurial companies in terms of that. Uh, so for all the founders out there, you know, when you, when you do your big exit, uh, Richard is probably your man to speak to at that stage. That would be great. We'd really love to help. Great. Thanks for being here with us uh, today. Appreciate it, Rich. Thanks so much, Lo. Hey, Lo here, one of the founders of Outsource CFO. If you enjoyed this video, make it official. Click subscribe.